Hello my loves, welcome back to Zeke's Lunchbox. So, I put out a vote to you guys a couple of weeks ago asking you what video you'd like to watch and the winner was a step-by-step -step chatting process of how I make a painting from beginning to end. So that's what we're gonna do today. I did make a video like this in the past, I think at the end of last year. So if you wanna watch that video and get another taster of these sort of videos, uh, there's another one there as well. Today, I'm going to paint a card in the Zeke's Arcana Tarot Project. I am painting all 78 cards and we are up to card 16 or 15 I believe in the major arcana. The minor arcana I will update you guys once we get there but right now I'm really focusing my time on finishing the majors and there are 22 in the major arcana. So really really close to finishing them. We will definitely finish the major arcana this year. If you are new here or you want to get reacquainted with the project I have a playlist down below of all the different videos I've made about the project so you can get really acquainted and really get your mind around the project and get really invested for the finish line you guys stay tuned you'll just have to subscribe to find out speaking of subscribing did you know that 40% of the people who watch these videos are not subscribed that's almost half of you so if you want to know more about the painting process and you want to know more about the arcana project make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any more videos in between videos you can also head over to my Instagram as well and really Really sink your teeth into the project. It's really really exciting guys. I'm so so pumped about it. Uh, okay, let's head into the video. Transition, let's go. So I have already gotten out my light box and traced the outline sketch onto paper. I have a list of all of the materials that I use for all the tarot cards will be listed below. All the materials that are here as well were in past video where I talk about my current favorite art supplies if you want to watch that and get a little bit more acquainted with those supplies. The first couple of layers are going to be very patchy and they're more just foundation so your paper has something to grip onto. Here you can see there's a little bit of graininess in the paper, that little speckly look. Basically you want to put your foundation and your paint layers maybe about two or three prior to even painting uh, and shading. This is all under painting here so you want to build up your foundation layers as much as possible so the paint has something to hold on to. I'm more just trying to pick out the very specific shades that I'm going to use so this is a good time to pick out your tones and specific colors that you want to use because it is all the underlayer and underpainting. You don't have to commit to any of these colors so it's a good time to pick your colors accurately. Okay so time to mix the paint. I am just using my regular Matisse titanium white and my very dirty palette knife. Popping that over on to the palette. Wash that clean and clean the palette knife to avoid buildup. For the background of this piece, I'm mostly using these two colors. This permanent light violet is pretty cool and this piece is quite cool, but I do want a couple of patches to be warmed up with this magenta here. I was playing around with a couple of other pinks, but this one mixed in with the purple turned out to be a little bit too muddy so going for something a little bit more warm just to get I don't know those nice rosy purple tones so I'm just gonna place those on there place them quite separately so I have space to mix at this stage just using a round brush at this stage when it comes to the early stages I'm not that particular about the brush that I use I usually like to dip in a little bit of water to make the paint a little bit more creamy and then just take a tiny little bit of purple, tiny little bit of the pink. I think it needs a bit more purple. For acrylic paint, I try and go lighter than I think I need, mostly because it does dry a lot darker than the color that is here, much like gouache. So I'll usually go a little bit lighter and then put it on the piece and see and go from there. Okay, so my goal for the background is I want the tones of the background to be a lot lighter than everything 
else that is going on. I'm going to have, I think, two light sources in this piece. One is like a light, almost like a giant James Terrell style light box in the background that kind of diffuses into the floor here. But then I'm going to have another light source coming this way just to actually illuminate the main character and the main focal point in the piece. This layer here won't be the final layer you see. I do tend to go darker first in my first couple of layers and then build my way up to the lights. Uh, it's something I say in all of my other blending videos. It's honestly the easiest way to simplify the whole process. So I'm being pretty loose and dotting all of those on. Also at any time in this video if you have any questions or I'm explaining things not accurately or they're very confusing or you don't understand because of my accent or I'm talking too fast whatever it is pop it in the comments below I'm more than happy to answer those simple questions but if you are wanting further help with your pieces on my Patreon I do have a monthly feedback where I make a video including your art and then I critique and give you some pointers on where you may be going wrong in your process or if you want any art or business tips head over there. Just gonna wait for this layer to dry with a hairdryer and then I'll be back. Okay, so a couple layers down on the background, weird sunset sky. A little bit patchy here, so I need to mix up a new batch and fix that. But for right now, I'm just focusing on the ground. Like I said, there are two light sources here from the sky, and then there'll be like a spotlight sort of deal here. So I'm just trying to put in all of my shadows, which takes a bit of building up. You can see here with acrylics, it does get very patchy with this particular color, the magenta color. Specifically with this one, you can see this white square here so that means that the paint is a little bit translucent and not very opaque unlike this one the square here is completely black so it is quite heavy and opaque which means you can get really good coverage with less layers that's mostly because it's got lots of white so darker tones like this have a little less a thickness so they're a little bit more translucent which means it takes a couple more layers for me to build this up especially it's a little bit tacky so when I put down a layer it kind of wipes off the past layer so I just need to be a little bit more patient maybe crack out the blow dryer once again while I'm waiting for everything to dry a little bit more I'm going to start laying down my foundation on this curtain and in my original planning sketch I have the curtain to be a little bit darker. It's the same tone of purple but just darker so crack out the dioxide purple right now and lay in all of the folds because I kind of just need to lay in my shadows just like I'm doing here. It requires quite a lot of layers so may as well get to it. <laughs> morning everyone so last night I potted around with the background just dusting in lightly to lighten up these areas here I think it may need a couple more or maybe one more session where I bring up the light tones a little bit further up and put a kind of like vague cloud scape back there I am having issues with this area just over here I'm just Actually, I'm just having issues generally with the ground, like always. Grounds are always something that I have the biggest problem with, mostly because the perspective has to be really spot on to sell the idea of perspective. So my plan for the ground is to have like a shiny concrete look because I want the whole place to look like a courthouse because the card is justice. So I was looking at courthouse floors <laughs> and they were all either like carpeted 
or they had like a black and white tile and neither of those were really suiting my look. I want it to feel a little bit more like the movie Satyricon where it has like a very barren, strong hued surreal look. I probably won't finish the ground until I place her in a little bit more so I can really see exactly what to push and pull. A couple more layers in. I'm going to focus in on coloring uh, the main character now just because I like to not expend too much energy on the background since it's not the focal point. I usually like to do a little bit just to get some setting and then put in the character and then I'll go back and do the rest of the environment. So this is kind of the laborious stage where I don't do much shading or anything. I'm more just placing down all of my colors, figuring out tones, and also filling up the page and the paper so it has some stuff to grip onto. So pretty tedious work, especially because this piece and this design has a lot of tiny, tiny little elements in it. The sword is super detailed, I guess because it's a very simple piece. I designed it to have lots of intricacies throughout all the accessories because it is a very straightforward piece. Let's do some colouring in. Okay, so real talk. We gotta stop and reassess some things. Now that I've seen all the colors laid down, I'm liking the direction of the color tones, but after a little bit of feedback from Rel, he has pointed out a couple of things. The perspective, one of my weakest points, I think that's obvious because I can't do landscapes. The perspective is off. Towers should go down a little bit more and be a lot more curved because you are seeing a lot of ground, therefore you should be seeing. I mean, here's a good example. Right here, they're quite flat, but you should be able to see quite a lot of the circle in the tower here. So that's fine. That just needs a little bit of tweaking. But the background, after doing the full, the full has a lot of movement. Let me get it out. How crazy is this angle? <laughs> After doing this piece, this piece has a lot of movement in her pose just naturally. So because the background is just pink and a little bit of landscape, I'm not really forced to play around with the environment all too much. And the movement's already built in with her pose. With Justice, however, the story that I'm kind of going with is that she's like time traveled back into this land and she's here to serve justice. Like, Pretty corny story, but that's just the plot line that I'm trying to just go with so I can get the mood and evoke the tone of the piece. She's very heroic and strong. You get that with her pose. The problem I'm finding, and there is a disparity when I sketch and plan the pieces versus when a couple months later, when I start to get to it and I paint it and then actually see it in action. The background and the environment is very stiff. The columns are stiff. You know, the columns, I can't really do much else with them except maybe like chip them back a little bit but the curtain and the floor and the sky I've been struggling with the last couple of days and they need to change. Yesterday I was going to do something drastic and just start again <gasps> but I think that's being a little bit overzealous and yeah, just kind of cutting the mustard a little bit too quick. The curtain in the background is kind of acting as yet another column because it is really stiff. Would I ever paint hair the way that I have placed in the curtain with no movement and no dynamicness in it? Never would I do that. When I made this piece, I thought like some strong columns would be, I don't know, like a nice little snapshot, but now looking at it, these elements would be really great as a photography set but as an art piece you do have to be very smart with the elements that you put in to evoke 
some kind of energy into the piece. So my solution. Yesterday I had to take a pause and figure out exactly what I wanted to do. <laughs> I did something dramatic and I started madly sketching a totally different design. I was really in a state yesterday where I'm like uh, panicking and freaking out and deciding what to do. So I sketched this piece thinking like maybe this could be an option and then I kind of came to my senses and made up a new plan. Now the new plan is to obviously lower the columns a little bit more. I might put a block on one just to give some more asymmetry and some more interest in the piece to break up the two columns a bit more. I'd like to chip away the top part of this column here and then what I'm going to do with the curtain is I'm going to have it draped in basically the same movement that she is positioned and her sword is positioned in just to complement the main character a little bit more. I'm gonna stop talking because it's been long enough. Sometimes you just have to step back and reassess when you actually see the piece in person. Person. So, let's get to it. I've just been tinkering away with the curtain a little bit more, doing that off camera and just plopping in some more darkness for the sword. Uh, I wanted to chat through the hair a little bit more and I'm up to the stage where I'm adding the final touches of the hair and I feel like I don't discuss that part all too much. So that's what I'm going to do now. The original hair was like quite stiff and didn't have that much flow and push the movement of the character. And because the pose is already very stiff, it needed some movement and energy to just bring it alive a little bit more, give it some more interest and give it some life. I've mixed up the hair a little bit more just to give it uh, some lovely like S shapes all around. And I've also broken it up to the underside and the front side. So you can see the underside of the hair here and then the front side kind of overlapping over the top, almost being the shape of like the outside of a ball. Now, brushes I've been using, I mostly use lots of round brushes, varying sizes. Absolute final stages, I will be using this brush. A little bit more length compared to the other ones. This one will just help to make those final little strands really loose and fluid and create a lot of movement so it's not so chunky and it breaks up the hair a bit more. Okay folks, we are on the home stretch. I've been painting quite a bit off camera, mostly because I felt like it was quite repetitive. I'm mostly just going in with the darker shades on everything and then lightening them up. Pretty much the same routine that I go for every single element. Because we're on the home stretch and I never really talk about the very final stages to really lift pieces and make them finalized, I felt like it was important to chat about that. So here on this column, I am finding if you make everything black and white, like so. This column here doesn't poke out nearly enough to give it a bit more separation from the background. So what I'm going to do is a bit of light glazing. Did it a little bit for the shadow here and then around here. I think a bit more glazing to separate the background and cast some shadows would be helpful. I know technically there wouldn't really be a shadow there, but just to give it more dimension, I think it really needs it. So I'm going to do that. And then the rest of it, I'm just filling in, darkening everything and then lightening up.
that is justice. I really hope you enjoy the card. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you got any value out of this video or you learned anything and you want to steal some ideas for yourself, go for it. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like. And also to the 40% of you who are not subscribed, make sure you do that as well. Head over to my description below if you want to catch up with the project. There are two ways that you can support my channel. If you'd like, you can head over to my Patreon where I give art advice and I'm working on a video series where I interact with you guys, give you advice and tips and extra resources on your art journey. And if you would like a tarot card print, you can head over to my shop as well. I'm pretty sure that's it. It's a lot of information, I know, but thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will catch you guys in the next video, uh, this time next week. Bye. Thank you.